first ride for six or seven days of seeing pouring the rain. channel. I'm very excited today. It's It's been raining non-stop for must be six or seven days. I've finally managed to get out, do a bit of riding, get out. I took Lucy for a, her first walk this morning. We were that excited. She was barking at all the dogs and I was barking with her. That's how excited we were. So today I've got, um, I'm going to do the uh, review of the weighted vest. Now this should be an interesting one. There's a couple of twists in this that I think you might be quite surprised about because I was when I found out about it. So I'm going to go for a bit more of a ride. I'll go and get the vest and put that on. I'll take you with me. And uh, as you'll, before we go, I'll just show you how brown the lake is. Just check out the lake. It's just chocolate brown from all the rain. Anyway, let's go and get this weighted vest and we'll get on with the video. Weighted vest. $29 it came out. I've been wearing it a fair bit, but it's been raining for the last six or seven days. So I hardly, I haven't been wearing it that much. I haven't been walking the dog. Um, the interesting thing about this is once I started looking into it, there was a study done with rats. And what they did is they implanted uh, capsules in two, two, uh, two rats, two types of rats. One, one that the capsule had the weight in it, which is 15% of the rat's body weight. And the other, as it was a control, it had another capsule, but there was no weight in it. So it was unweighted. And what they did was they, they tested to see what would happen with these rats normal weight rats that were carrying around an extra 15 percent of their body weight and the amazing thing was like counterintuitively you'd expect them the the rats with the added weight would have burnt more calories therefore they would have eaten more food but it was actually the reverse was the case the, the rats with the implanted weights lost weight and they're putting it down to this thing they've discovered called the gra gravitostat. Okay, and what that means is in your bones, in your in your knees, and in your hips, and probably your shoulders, there's like a um, a weight sensing device that t sends a message to your brain to tell you how much you weigh, and to adjust your um, calories and your metabolism to suit. Now apparently when you're overweight and you're carrying a lot of fat it cancels it out because all the hormones or whatever in the fat stop this gravitostat from working. But once you start approaching a normal weight the gra gravitostat, it's a hard word to say, kicks in and it raises your metabolism and it stops it, it takes away the hunger i think it's um leptin is the is the hormone that signals that you're full similar to this weight loss drug that i'm on which does the same thing it tells you that when you're full so the whole idea is with this weighted vest is not only am i burning more calories and my heart rate's probably going up from around the 85, 87 mark to 120 or 130 on a flat surface, like walking reasonably briskly. So it makes a difference. Plus I've been hanging another five kilos of weights around my neck, one down the front, one down the back, and I've just, I just stick a piece of string with a, something underneath it so it doesn't cut into me as an extra weight. And that's because that, that was what the rats study said was 15%. So with the extra five kilos and this and this weight vest, that's approximating probably 15%. Now the 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 fly in the ointment is 
I'm not wearing this 24 7 I'm only wearing it for an hour and a half or two hours a day at the most whereas the rats had the weight going 20 24 hours a day so how much of that Graviso stats um, effect will kick in I don't know but they have done a couple of human studies but the research in humans is in its infancy. Simplified version, the theory is carrying an extra load like a weight vest could help promote fat loss and muscle retention. And although wearing a weight vest sounds about as fun as dragging your naked body through a field of stinging nettles, some of you might be inclined to give it a crack. Which uh, appear promising, but it's, it's very early in the piece at the moment. You know, you don't, there's not a lot of, um, science to back it up but what there is does sound promising so i thought i'd just throw that in there um because yeah once i started looking into it i couldn't believe what i was seeing you know now has it made it affected my appetite i don't know because i'm on this um monjaro weight loss injection so my appetite has been reduced anyway so i can't say i've noticed any increase or, or decrease in appetite but um, yeah, I just thought that was a pretty uh, interesting uh, thing. As far as comfort goes, this thing is just amazing. It's like a mother's hug. That's what I'm going to tell you. I know that's, that might sound absolutely ludicrous, but the way that it hugs you front and back, it just gives you this feeling of, I don't know, security and warmth and um, comfort. I can't explain it because I thought I'd hate it. I thought this is going to be, this is going to be absolutely grueling. I thought I'm going to hate every second of this because it's going to make walking harder. And I'm very lazy. I don't like to increase things. So that's probably all I'm going to say on the on the um, the weighted vest for now. I will end the uh, put people out of their misery for the for the story from last the uh, tall tales and true. I wasn't going to, I was going to tell a different one, but uh, I think I'd be annoyed if, if I was left hanging, so I'm going to tell you anyway. And it's a bit of an anti-climax, I've got to be honest. You know, at the end of the last story, I was uh, stuck in this car as a hostage. Now, they never said I was a hostage, but two desperate characters on the run for the police. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to be, have too much imagination to work out what would happen if they were surrounded by the police. So at the earliest opportunity, when the, both of them had left the car to go to the toilet or something, I just ran off like a thief in the night. I bolted, I grabbed my stuff, grabbed a drink bottle or something, and ran around the back of the roadhouse through the scrub and I hid underneath this um, like shipping container thing. And I laid there for ages because I wasn't sure if they were looking for me, if they were circling around, if they were, if they were wait, you know, lay, laying in wait. So I, I sat, I sat put, and I waited till I was, it was getting dark, and I saw some lights uh, from a car in the distance, and they pulled up at the pump in this little tiny outpost in the middle of nowhere. And I've ended up running across to them, explaining what had happened and just begging them for a lift to get out of there. And which they obliged and they did. And uh, I ended up at, um, I think it was Eucla. And I met my mate Kerry there, he was waiting for me. There was a mouse plague. You've never seen anything like it. I'm talking hundreds, of, hundreds and thousands of mice. We were laying in this shed that we found, we we're trying to get to sleep. And these things just, these rodents just completely, they're in the slit, in our blanket, they're in your hair, they were biting and clawing, just thousands and thousands of them. We ran and ran and ran up to where the roadhouse was and went into the toilets there and barricaded us, ourselves in and we put everything under the doors to try and get stop these mice getting in. And... Uh, the guy that ran the server came out with a hose and he was trying to get us out. Get out, you dirty hippies! And he's trying to hose under the under the uh, under the doors of the, the the toilet cubicle. But we weren't getting out. We were that scared of these mice that uh, we stayed there the night, shivering, soaking wet. He already hosed us, 
and then the morning came and we got out of there now the next day we both I said to Carrie I said that's it I'm not splitting up anymore I said from here on in I'm not going on my own that really put the wind up me this whole thing with these uh, escaped guys from jail anyway we did manage to get a lift both of us and we're cruising along and uh, a couple of hours later on the side of the road there's this old car that I was traveling in with these two guys the police had pulled them over one of them was getting put had his hands behind his back being handcuffed getting put into the uh, back of a police car I ducked down terrified that they'd see me and think that I was the one that um, that uh, dobbed them in phoned the police and I don't know if I did or I didn't it's 50 years ago and I really I'd like to think I did because they were just you know they needed to be put back in jail basically but I don't think I had any money and it would have taken it would have cost 20 cents for a phone call and I don't recall seeing a, a pay phone anywhere and I've got no recollection so either way it doesn't really matter they got picked up by the police we were on our way we got to just outside Kalgoorlie which is a pretty big town in Western Australia famous for its gold and we got picked up by this guy, this amazing man. He just took one look at us, he said, get in. He said, you're coming home with me. He's taken us back to his house. He's given us clothes, he's given us a bath, he's given us a feed, he's given a, uh, a, a bed for, I think we stayed there two or three nights, two nights. And then when we'd recovered and we were sort of back to some sem semblance of normality, he dropped us off and we hitchhiked our way to Perth. And this guy was just uh, that, the proverbial Good Samaritan. We got to Perth, we had a plan in our heads. The, the plan was, I, I think, I don't know if we had 20 cents left or if we found 20 cent coin, I can't remember. But we went to the first phone box we could find, looked up the Salvation Army. There was a hostel in East Perth, I think it was. We phoned them up told them the story they said come on down you can come we'll, we'll put you up stay safe stay empowered and remember growing up is optional you don't have to grow up if you don't want to we've all got that child within us it doesn't matter how old you get even for 110 that little boy and that or that little girl is still in here waiting to get out and have some fun so until next Thursday with the weigh-in I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit better um, um, news than last time, but even if it isn't, you know, that's the, way, that's the way life is, you know, sometimes you get disappointed and other times you don't, so until then, see you next time.